the Mac Computer's Court Army, Levin here. What can you do if a dog owner habitually lets their dog run in the neighborhood? What do you say? Call the police, I guess. No? You can call the police, um, but they may not come out, right? I mean, they've got a lot of fish to fry. Uh, he has to give up the dog. He can't take, take How do you do that? Court. Make them go to court and take care of it. Okay. Uh, what do you say? I argue with her um, about calling the police. So you would call the police? Yes. Okay, I got something to, I got something to talk about when we get back. I, I should say, call the Department of Animal Control. They're the ones that are responsible, and they can put an end to a dog doing this, roaming in the neighborhood by threatening the dog owner, and eventually they may have to remove the dog. Hmm. Sounds right. The police are busy with a lot of more serious crimes, while animal control departments have a narrower mission that focuses on exactly this kind of thing. But in San Francisco, on June 25, 2018, a civil grand jury report on dogs and public safety in the city found that San Francisco Animal Care and Control, which is mandated to enforce all animal control laws under the city's health code, had failed to take that mission seriously, particularly with regard to its duty to enforce the dog leash law. We are thoroughly convinced of their devotion to the well-being of animals. Their current practices do not show the same devotion to public safety against dog attacks and bites. And that failure to enforce the dog leash law is no accident. Mr. Chairman, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry to be here. Um, I'm Mr. Chairman. It's the deliberate decision of Animal Care and Control's Executive Director, Virginia Donahue, who was made head of the agency despite having no law enforcement or public safety background. She does own a private, for-profit animal boarding and dog training business, which, in one of the grosser conflicts of interest the city can claim, is run by her husband, even as her government agency regulates that business and commends its services to pet owners. Executive Director Donahue claimed in a September 16, 2016 email that animal care and control staff were too busy to enforce the leash law, too busy picking up dead animals off the street, for one thing. And after all, it wasn't a matter of immediate health and safety. She has never explained how she came to conclude that dogs off-leash are not a matter of immediate health and safety. She just asserted this, in the face of hundreds of dog bites and dog attacks in the city every year, most of which could be mitigated, if not completely prevented, by the effective use of a leash. Protecting the public is something animal care and control's management simply seems to have very little interest in. The result has been a sloppy, dysfunctional, ineffectual organization. San Francisco City Hall, May 1st, 2018. I don't have to have a leash on her as long as she's under my voice control. A man at an entrance to the building is refusing to leash his pit bull. San Francisco police officer Ryan Crockett of the police department's Vicious and Dangerous Dog Unit just happens to be at City Hall for a hearing taking place that afternoon, but doesn't hesitate to take on the task of patiently and professionally dealing with the stubborn dog owner. This all goes on for about 40 minutes, watched by a couple of other police officers and the sheriff's deputies who provide security for City Hall and briefly by Deputy Director Diana Christensen and Acting Captain Ellie Sadler of Animal Care and Control, who were there to attend the same city hall hearing as Officer Crockett and to just walk away from the situation when they decide it has nothing to do with them. One might think that the Deputy Director of Animal Care and Control would have at least been interested in maintaining a presence as a show of professional diligence and solidarity, or perhaps just out of curiosity to see how her staff does when they are called to take the dog into custody because only animal care and control has the proper equipment for seizing and transporting a dog rather than abandoning the scene outside in order to sit peacefully in the hearing room where her only duty is to listen to a hearing that is recorded and can be listened to later. Unlike Officer Crockett, whose duties at these hearings include making sure the parties are present and signed in, calling the hearing to order, 
and presenting the cases and files to the hearing officer, but who was being detained this afternoon because he had been left to take responsibility for the unleashed dog outside. It's almost as though animal care and control doesn't even think enforcing the dog leash law is any of their business. And just a few weeks later, on the very same day that the civil grand jury issued its report calling for animal care and control to begin enforcing the dog leash law, another animal control officer, Captain Amy Corso, was found relying on the police to do her job as well. Monday, San Francisco Police 278, how can I help you? Hi, this is Captain Amy Corso. I'm calling from San Francisco Animal Care and Control. Hi. We, we have a gentleman here who is refusing to put his, um, hold his pit bull's leash in our lobby. We have to stop anybody from dogs coming in and we have to have our volunteers stop coming through. Um, he's had interactions, negative interactions with PD before. seconds. We're hoping you guys can send somebody to help us out. Sure, and so he's refusing to put a leash on his pit bull, is that what I heard? Yeah, his dog's, his dog's um, has a leash around it, but it's, he won't pick it up. Um, we can't have other dogs come into the lobby because of this. Okay. And he refuses to leave. What does he look like? In fact, it was the very same man Animal Care and Control had washed their hands of outside City Hall. And again, the police did come to the rescue of untrained law enforcement personnel and arrest the man who continued to refuse to leash his dog, in spite of the fact that San Francisco's animal control officers are peace officers who have the power of arrest, even if the police are used to transport the arrested person to jail. An animal control department phoning the police to deal with a dog owner who won't leash his dog in its own animal control facility, no less, should be every bit as embarrassing as the prospect of the police phoning the sheriff's department to keep order in a police station. You start to wonder if walking away from responsibility is the only training San Francisco's animal control officers get. We're hoping you guys can send somebody to help us out. I argue with her um, about calling the police. 